I am late is a phrase a lot of Lusaka boyfriends don't want to hear but no I really am late but you're probably watching this on a Friday because I got caught up with school so this is last week's news but yes I'm going to post another one on Sunday hi this is Joey Mukando and welcome to the roundup This week, the C and CBU stood for charity. The B and the U stood for buses and Ubunga. The Copper Belt University received the bus and free millimil from the government. They donated hundreds of 12.5 kg bags, which translates into millions of grams. Call that a millimil. Now, the catch was the millimils from the DMMU, which donates to emergency and disaster stricken areas. Now, look at these photos. Does CBU look like a disaster to you? Okay. Yeah, it does, but that, that's not the point. The people are always going to complain about donations in an election year, but the truth is politicians are going to keep on donating because you judge them based on how generous they are. Someone gives you a zali and suddenly that's the best politician, that's the one you should vote for, man. You are a liar. The only place where you're keeping it 100 is in your pocket. I can't vote for him, he's too greedy. You really want to talk about greedy. You're the same people that see street kids asking for coins at the traffic lights and you roll up your window faster than a cheating university girlfriend when she enters campus in her blesser's car. And I'm not talking about the government. Most political parties go campaign with gifts or incentives. And the people that love donations are screaming, go hard, give more money. But honestly, that's just throwing money out the window. Go soft, go Microsoft, and throw the money back into the windows. Invest in the system. What do I mean? Instead of donating million meal, we could bring back students meal allowances so that they can buy their alcohol, I mean their food. And as much as the Chama donation was great, instead of donating to one patient we could invest money into research and chemotherapy equipment because there are thousands of other patients out there that can't be donated to and these things need money because the only place you can learn about cancer for free is on a horoscope Zambia needs to stop judging politicians based on how much money they can give out because politicians are not meant to be philanthropists they are meant to be efficient managers of the country's resources like a Nigerian man would say you need to listen to their plans because that's what they are going to manifesto theodide there manifest next next story mazabuka is about to be dethroned as the sweetest town in zambia a new multinational company plans on opening up a sugar plantation in luapula finally luapula is about to be known for something other than witchcraft they are so cross but yet so far this is great news because now we have kasama sugar we have mansa sugar we have kawamba sugar and zambia sugar ladies and gentlemen the news doesn't get sweeter than this so now luapula probably needs to start offering short courses in sugar growing then this whole sweet town thing can really stick we'll call that a glucose this investment is set to increase financial activity in the area if you've ever been wondering if the cash crop of mazabuka can boost an economy the answer is yes sugar cane but hopefully this is going to help reduce sugar prices i don't even know why we say rich kids were born with a silver spoon in their mouth have you seen the sugar prices rich kids were born with a white spoon in their mouth and it makes sense because just like Zach and Cody, these kids are living a sweet life. What do we have next? In entertainment news, this week, Mutale Moa... I told you, we're not doing stories about her anymore. She's been in the news too much. The problem is you don't listen. You're going to get fired. Just like... Anyway, in international news. This week, the Minister of Justice in Malawi flew to Geneva to attend a virtual meeting. He flew to attend a virtual meeting. Why do African leaders like to fly so much? I mean, even in places where you're not needed, you just show up because you can. This is just like dating a girl that drives in Lusaka. Ah, babe, I think today we can just talk over the phone. Mm, I'm already at the gates. I mean, everyone else attended virtually. He literally traveled to address 1,461 empty seats. Well, I guess we can call him the chairman. I thought rappers like to fly the most, but our leaders stop them. I mean, how do you like to fly more than the Birdman? Because honestly, no one likes the air more than African politicians and Nike when they're naming a new shoe. Nike, you've honestly abused the word. At this point, if Nike started making tropicals for Zambia, they would be called the air patapata. Anyway, African officials and planes, I wonder why they're so drawn to aviation. Even when there's no reason to fly, they'll just come up with a reason and wing it. And it's all of them always in the sky. But anyway, you know what they say, birds of the same feather flock together. Now, I'm not saying they're high when they make some of these decisions, but but clearly, they're on cloud nine. In agricultural news, fishermen in Shibuyunji were nabbed after they were found capturing fish during a fish ban. Word on the lake is policemen found these fishermen chilling in a boat, but upon further inspection, something seemed a little fishy. The traders in Shibuyunji were found to have had 650 kgs of fresh fish, 200 kgs of dry fish, and 28 mosquito nets. And 
the problem is most of the fish that they were found with were fingerlings. You know, the small fish. Sorry for this, but fingerlings just sounds like if a couple of gentlemen went to the police to report that he found a couple with the guy's hand up the girl's skirt. Tell us, what did you see? I saw them doing the fingerlings. <laughs> okay, today... I am the pervert! So the fish ban is supposed to start on the 1st of December, you know, so that the fish can enjoy Christmas. And it's supposed to last all the way up to the second day of the month after February. But they couldn't wait that long because apparently that was too much. So the fish were confiscated but the traders were let off with a warning. Government advised them to find other things to do during the fish ban. You could become a farmer or you could become a trader. Or you could even become a carpenter because you are what you eat. Or in this case, you are what you fish. And lastly, in investigative news, this this week, thieves broke into a Catholic church in Kitwe near Kamfinsa. When we say be like Jesus, we don't mean the part where it says he comes like a thief in the night. You can't be a thief and say you're being like Jesus because the only thing Jesus ever stole is our hearts. Kopala people always take things too far. Last year, thieves in Lusaka broke into XYZ studios, stole equipment, and stole their body of work. This year, Kopala thieves break into a Catholic church, steal equipment, and steal the body of Christ. How do you steal from a church? Like, no guilty conscience. If I even just stole a pen from church, my heart would be so heavy. But these gentlemen stole the Eucharist with no remorse, zero heaviness in the heart. I guess just like a cancelled Catholic church service, their hearts have no mass. Or is it no way? Listen, you, you get the joke. When we say sinners and thieves are welcome to church, we mean to attend the service, not to come rob us. See, this is where the story takes a weird turn, because the generator and the speaker were found in a nearby field, but the Eucharist was gone. So my theory is that during the heist, they got hungry and ate the Eucharist, and it changed their life. So this is weird to say, but I'm actually happy they stole the Eucharist. Because really, it's the one that helped save the day. Even if it's unleavened bread, it still managed to rise to the occasion. The economy is hard, and the level of theft is rising. I mean, people are even stealing from a church. This just shows that the situation is dire. This is why we need to create more jobs, empower the people, and not just give them donations. Because you know what they say, if you give a man a fish, he's only going to eat for a day. But if you teach a man to fish, he's going to eat for the rest of his life. Except for the times when there's a fish bun. Unless, of course, he's a fisherman from Shibuyunji. This has been Joey. Thanks for watching. Peace out. This video is brought to you by FACT Zambia. FACT is an independent youth-led organization that focuses on accountability and civil transparency. And this week, we're doing a survey in collaboration with USAID. If you love me and you want me to get paid, please fill in this survey. It's only going to take you less than a minute. It's linked in the description below.